Hello friends, in this video we will be discussing about the signaling pathway in mating of yeasts. In the mating of yeast, the yeast grows a projection known as shimu projections towards a potential mate. And this all is governed by mating factor or we can say a pheromone released by a yeast which initiates the pathway in the yeast cell. So let's see how the signaling pathway, how the signaling molecule alters the behavior and structure of a yeast cell for the shimu projection to be formed. In the signaling pathway, the yeast cell has got G protein coupled receptor and on G protein, the GDP is bound when it's in an inactive state and it's when the mating factor comes in and binds with the receptor of G protein. As you can see in the diagram, the ligand binding to the GPCR causes conformational changes in the G protein coupled receptor which allows it to act as a Gauni nucleotide exchange factor GEF and by the action of GEF the GDP is exchanged for GTP on G protein and with the association of GTP towards the G protein the G protein becomes activated. The activation of G protein recruits a STE5 protein in the yeast cell which is actually a scaffold protein and after this the phosphorylation cascade kicks in. Where we see the first protein to be phosphorylated is the FUS3 protein or we can say FUS3 protein. The phosphorylated FUS3 protein moves to plasma membrane and here at that site the FUS3 protein phosphorylates the formin protein thus activating the formin protein. As we know the formin proteins are involved in the polymerization of microfilaments and associates with the fast growing end of microfilaments. So now what this formin will do is that it will act on microfilaments where it drives the polymerization of microfilaments and finally the yeast cell grows a long microfilament and with the growth of a microfilament the cell forms the shimu projections like this and it's now ready for potential mating. The shimu projections allow the directional growth of yeast cell and to allow a successful fusion of two yeast haploid cells for mating purposes the shimu projection are the key to it. As you can see in this diagram, first the two opposite haploid yeast cells come together and secrete mating factor. And then after that, they form the respective shimu projections. And it's all due to these shimu projections the yeast cell is able to fuse for mating purposes. And one of the funny questions arises here is that why it's called shimu? It's because it resembles 1950 cartoon character by that name, shimu. The projection the structure of the projection in yeast cell resembles that shimu cartoon character. That's why they are called shimu projections. So this is all about the mating in yeast, the shimu projection formation and the signaling pathway in it. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.